This is a Prusa Mini clone. As a long time 3D printing enthusiast, I started out with an Anet A8. The Anet worked really good for about a year, but then the problem started. After switching to the original Prusa printer, my experience drastically improved. About a year ago, I started a 3D printing business, and when the business grew, I needed more printers. The Prusa Mini was a really good option, but after getting two of them, I realized that the price was getting a bit too steep. I started looking for alternatives, like the Ender 3 and other Chinese printers, but I really wanted to stick with Prusa. Then I stumbled upon the Feistec clone. I was a bit skeptical at first, but since the reviews were really good, I ordered two of them. After receiving and unboxing them, I really couldn't notice any difference between the originals and the clones. Since the quality was so good, I have been ordering them ever since. In this video I'll show you what's inside the box, how I assembled one, I'll also show you some upgrades that I do to all of my printers and you'll see a test print. The printer comes in a big cardboard box. You get everything except the 3D printed parts. Here we get the display, the display cable, the power switch, some heatsinks and connectors and the bodyboard. Here are the aluminium extrusions, two for the Y axis and one for the Z axis. In this cylindrical box are the steel rods and some cable sleeves. These are the parts for the Y carriage and as you can see, a textured sheet is included. These are the stepper motors, one for each axis and one more for the extruder. I left this box for the end since it holds the most parts. Here we have the gears and the bearings for the extruder, some belts and pulleys, wire cutters and a needle for unclogging the nozzle, the hot end, the heat brake and heatsink, the fan for the heatsink, filament sensor parts, more bearings for the spool holder, some LM8UU and LM10LUU linear ball bearings, some parts for holding the Z-axis, the leveling probe and a USB stick, sponge feet, a set of allen keys, the bolts, the print fan, some zip ties and the power supply. The power supply is actually really good, which I wasn't expecting. It's a Minivel one, which is a high quality brand that makes power supplies in China. After unboxing all of the parts, I like to put everything on the table so that it's visible and easy to find. The worst parts to be looking for are definitely the bolts and nuts. I've always had trouble with this and since assembling my last printer, I put all of the screws inside these plastic trays before starting anything, so that they are organized and easy to find. The tools are also easily lost in the mess on the table, so I'll try my best to keep everything in sight so I can be done with this build as soon as possible. With starting the assembly, I just want to mention that this is not a tutorial. I'm simply showing you how I assembled one printer and I'll be giving you some tips along the way. I follow the provided instruction videos, which were linked in the GitHub repo. The build starts with assembling the Y carriage. First of all, I had to tighten one pulley to the Y stepper motor. Then I screwed the motor to the back 3D printed end piece with M3 by 12 mm bolts. I screwed in the aluminum extrusions and test fitted the front end. I got the Y carriage steel plate that holds the build plate and installed the linear bearings. These bearings are okay, but not close to what Prusa gives you, so I would recommend packing them with grease so they last longer. When installing them, don't over tighten, just make them snug. I followed by securing the heat bed. The provided screws that hold the heat bed to the standoffs were a bit too short, and I immediately stripped one of them. To fix this, I grabbed my random bolts drawer and found replacements. Then I assembled the Y-belt idler and attached it to the front end. I put the steel rods into their holes and continued with installing the belt. Here I screwed in the front end and forgot to put the T-nuts inside the right extrusion, so I'll have to take it off in the next bit. I installed the belt holder, adjusted the tension, tightened everything and tested if it's smooth. I took the display and its plastic housing. Screw the display inside and put the knob on the encoder. The display is held to the printer with a single M3 by 12 mm bolt. The next thing is the extruder, and this extruder sucks. Not the clone one, but in general. I already upgraded a few of them, so I'll quickly build one from the parts I already have laying around. Then comes the Z carriage. 9 flat M3 nuts and 4 M3 by 12 mm bolts were needed, and for the other part, 2 M3 nuts. I took the LM10 bearings and installed them. I put the pulley on the motor and screwed everything together. 
For the X carriage end, I took two flat M3 nuts, one M3 lock nut, one M3 by 12 mm and two M3 by 12 mm bolts. I assembled everything as shown in the videos. Then comes assembling the X carriage. I inserted two nuts, unpacked the bearings, wiped the oil off of them, packed them with grease and installed them into the 3D printed part. The X carriage goes onto the rails and the X end needs to be installed. Then I secured the belt and tightened it. For the hot end I unscrewed the three grub screws from the heatsink and pulled out the heat brake. I put some thermal paste on the heat brake to make the heat transfer better. The thermal paste was included in the package. After putting it all back I installed the heater and the thermocouple. Then goes the 3D printed spacer, a fan and the leveling probe. I screwed on the print cooling fan and routed all of the wires inside the sleeve. The sleeve is held to the heatsink with a little 3D printed clip. For the Z bottom I got all of the parts that were shown in the video. I put all of the nuts in their holes and installed the heatsinks on the stepper drivers. The bodyboard is held with 4 M3 by 8 mm bolts. The Z axis aluminium extrusion is held by 2 M5 bolts and after assembling it I hammered the rods to the base. For the top part of the Z axis I installed the nuts and bolts and secured the stepper motor to the plastic part. The rods were a little bit hard to get inside the part, so I had to use my hammer again. After that, I secured the extruder to the Z carriage, connected the PTFE tube and secured the wire harness with three zip ties. The extruder motor cable goes inside the same harness and the X motor cable gets its own one. The Z motor wires are protected with these plastic covers which just go inside the extrusion slot. The Z bottom which now holds the rest of the printer is connected to the Y axis with the T nuts I inserted into the extrusion earlier. Make sure that everything is square so you don't have problems later. To connect everything to the bodyboard I went on Google and searched for a pinout and connected all of the connectors to the board. The hot end and bed heater wires have special terminal blocks. You have to untighten two screws, put the wires in and tighten them again. Then they just plug into the board same as all of the other connectors. With everything connected before closing the box the bodyboard was in, I wanted to do a quick test so if something is not connected right I wouldn't have to open it again. I connected the printer to the power supply, turned it on and let it do its own self test. Everything seemed to be right so I turned it off and closed the electronics box. I tried routing the display cable inside the extrusion slot but failed miserably. For the upgrades I wanted to install a new nozzle, put a X motor cable holder and a new print fan shroud. But since I had to complete the setup before I can control the temps, I left the nozzle and the print fan for later. I turned the printer on again and went with the first layer calibration. The printer wouldn't complete the mesh leveling and I fixed that by squaring the frame. After the first layer calibration was done, I started by installing the new nozzle and the print fan holder. I adjusted the leveling probe height and did the first layer calibration once again. After that the only thing left to do was to assemble the spool holder and to do a test print. Hello! I've been printing with these printers for a very long time now and I have to say that there is no difference between them and the originals. That is in print quality of course. This printer is a good choice for someone that's already been printing for some time and already has a working printer at home. You have to print the parts yourself and the assembly process was not that straightforward as you saw already. The printer comes with a price of around 200 to 250 dollars without the printed parts which is half of the original. The original printer prints the same but you get the best support I have ever received. When you unbox an original Purusa printer, you get the similar feeling like when unboxing an Apple product. Everything is made to look beautiful, simple and easy. If something breaks you can just contact the Purusa support team and they will help you. While with the clone you will have to send messages to Chinese guys and hope they will reply. So would I recommend it? To someone that's already been printing and needs more printers, yes. To someone that's getting a first printer, absolutely not. The original Purusa Mini would be a much better option. I had a few of these laying around and never got the time to assemble them, so I decided to make a video about it. I hope it was informative and enjoyable to watch me assemble one of them. In the last video someone asked me in the comments about the wire spool holders I used. 
I designed the holder but delayed publishing them anywhere because some tolerances were not right and sanding was required before assembly. Those issues are now fixed and you can get the models from the link in the description. And they are free of course. Thanks for watching, I like reading comments so if you have something to say leave it down below. And if you want to see more projects like this one don't forget to subscribe.